All right, and we are live. Are we? Yeah, we should be. Are we live? Can't find it. What? Yeah, having trouble finding it. I swear we're live right now. Okay. Well, let's talk. Today, today hey. is... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hold on, <laughs> we need to confirm this before I go any further. I don't want another one. I believe we're live right now. Oh, yeah, we're live, dude. Okay. We gotta be live. <laughs> okay, Toy Tuesday, I got it, I got it. Okay. We are live. Good. Um, yeah. All right, we're good. Okay, that was a... You know, with YouTube, you can never really tell. Right? Yeah. There is something about that. Yeah, because we have clone channels back again. Clone channels. Yeah, I remember we did this. We looked and when you go over there and highlight your little. Oh, avatar. that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Some clone channels again. All right. So today we are talking about toys, toys that we have individually picked up and decided to look at and talk about. And um, I don't have a preference of what we go for first. Do you, Todd? No, and basically these are toys we drool over, don't have, want, they're on our list. If you if you want to join our registry, the registry can be found at, um... <laughs> you got an Amazon wish list, Todd? <laughs> 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 so do you, do you find yourself looking for, like, newer toys, or do you, are you a nostalgia guy? Do you like going after the old stuff? Oh, newer toys, I don't, I don't bother, uh seeking out i have plenty of old toys really yeah see and I, i'm on the opposite i don't have any of the toys i had as a child and sometimes i'll see something like a old transformers toy and i, and I can remember it and i'm like man i gotta have that and i go on ebay and it's like 300 dollars. i'm like i don't want it that bad mm -hmm. but um yeah. yeah toys are fun um now we're adults so we don't necessarily buy toys to play with but um, mm -hmm. No, but they, they take up some nice shelf space, you know. Um, but let's go, let's go ahead and uh, check out what I got here first for us. All right, so we're gonna start this off with a golem life-size statue. Whoa! Wait! Wait! What? Really? Yeah. I gotta see this. Hold on, because I'm sharing it out. I'm sharing this out, so I gotta see this. Oh, you're not screen sharing. Uh, you know, it. you know what? I'll just, uh, I'll just screen share for the sake of, of screen sharing here. Let's go to my windows here, and we'll do this. There, that's just for you, Todd. I have that statue, by the way. It's, it's just life cool. size. I'm not talking about your sister-in-law, okay? No, this no, I, I actually <laughs> look. I actually have that statue. It's the one that came um, with one of the. Uh, director's cut editions or whatever really the box set yeah with the denims and all that and the nice beautiful artwork that's in there and the and yeah okay. i have it. it's right it's like it's like a foot away from me okay so yours is obviously not the the life-size one though who says you never know <laughs> i've actually seen this in real life really uh, yeah comic-con 2015 i think 2016 oh you do all have right. it yeah. Whoa, that's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's yep. crazy. I didn't think you uh, liked uh, Lord of the Rings like that. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, you're you're like either a big. Are you... I watched it. I watched it in silence. Like I couldn't <laughs> even hear it, and I watched it because I can't help myself. Um, this thing stands like I think four and a half, five feet tall. Wow. Yeah, the height on this is fifty-five and almost fifty-six inches tall. So it's a, it's a pretty tall thing. Um, where I saw it, it was behind a glass case, but it, it was, uh, I mean, you couldn't help but stop and stare at this thing. And um, if I ever had a living room that was big enough, it'd be cool to have this thing, you know, off in the corner. I always thought, put a little hat, put your hat on him, you know? Cool and for who? For me. Just you, right? Yeah, just you for me. That. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting married with this in the corner you know that 
<laughs> Gollum will always love me, okay? <laughs> you met, I mean, it's one of those things that would freak you out in the middle of the night, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got a story to tell about life-size statues, okay? Awesome. But this isn't a statue, this is a cardboard cutout. My grandmother is in love with the um, Laura Croft, Angelina Jolie uh, version. Mm -hmm. She has a life-size cardboard cutout of her in her house. And I was staying there one night, and it was like in the corner of the room. And sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, it's a new place, so, you know. And I saw it, I was just like, there's an alien in my room. I'm like, the myths about being abducted are true, you know, because I just saw the outline of this thing. It scared me to death. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. So I know what you mean. I know what you mean. All right. Um, but yeah, this thing... Oh, oh. Can you, like, for instance, right, as mm -hmm. a practical joke, like, say, you know, you there's that um, glow-in-the-dark paint. Like, you wanted to scare somebody. You rub a little glow-in-the-dark paint on its eyes or something like that. That would freak somebody out, like a practical joke kind of thing. Dude, that would be, be awesome. terrifying. Yeah. For anybody who's afraid of the dark, that would be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> even Even without the dark, this thing is terrifying. Um, you could put a, a little motion sensor recording, like somebody walks by it or something. Mm -hmm. Nice sense, mate. <laughs> Feel the <opposite. laughs> Um Yeah, this is actually good. How how much is this, Joe? I was looking at when I last looked at it. It was like five hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, somewhere around there. Uh, but it's discontinued, so you can no longer get this thing. You can only get this on the uh, secondhand market. Yeah. So I'm guessing it ranges anywhere. I mean, there's there's not a lot of these things, so you're probably looking in above a thousand, two thousand dollars for one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the next toy is just for you, Todd. <laughs> now I I grew up in poverty. I don't know about anybody else, but um, there was always this, and we'd always steal these things. What's <laughs> this? They they started making little lawn chairs for those tables they put in the middle of pizzas. Wait, wait. This is just something I spotted just yesterday. I know. I saw that. And I wanted to bring it up. No, this is an actual thing? Because I just thought that was like some cool... No, it's an actual thing. Idea. Yeah. I thought it was like their cool idea. We're just going to, you know, like a one-time thing. This is a mm -hmm. thing that you can get where? Oh, let's, uh, let's look at that. Because to me, this uh, would it's be, a Canadian restaurant chain, Boston Pizza. Okay. If I open a pizza and there's little chairs in there with this table. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it'll be the first time that I take a picture of my food and put it out there in the interwebs. Because <laughs> I'm not like that. I'm not one to, to, to shoot. Right. Sh oh, I made something fantastic. Look. Right. But this, if I open up a pizza and get this, I'm mm. taking a picture of it. Well, we, we used to save those for our Lego men. Now that way they would have tables and you set up your little Lego men next to them. But right. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, someone's 3D printing these exp or especially for this uh, Canadian restaurant and they're That's using them cool. in, in all their chains. So it's just a, it's just a little like just a little mo memento to, you know, ha it's a happy life. You know, this is mm -hmm. it's a good part of life to enjoy. Yeah. OK, so that's my non-serious one. Um, this one was for DeWolf, but he's not here tonight. So and this one, oh, he picked one. No, I got this one for him because I wanted to know if he would buy a life size R2D2 for twenty five thousand dollars. No, but he'd make one. Oh, he'd probably make one. Yeah. Yeah. But you can get this at uh, Galaxy's Edge, that uh, Star Wars park. Park? No, it, it is a big giant uh, outlet mall for Star Wars gear. Is that really what it is? It's a, it's a museum with one ride. That's oh. What it is. A museum with one ride. Yeah, you know how every museum has a gift shop. Mm -hmm. Every museum has little scenes and things, dioramas, I think they call them. Right. Right. They there are seriously tons of dioramas, lots of shops, and one ride. Oh man. Oh, and plenty of like weird food and things you could eat that you know are reminiscent of, you know, uh, of the movies and stuff like that. Like, you can drink blue milk if you. That's right at the bar. Drinks. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's basically what this is: is a Star Wars museum with a ride. 
But $25,000. That's steep for a tin can, mm. you know? I mean, I can take a blue marker to my trash can, draw eyes on it, and it'd be just as good. Basically what... <laughs> <laughs> well, basically what you said if i'm paying that much i want the midget inside right that's right <laughs> i want the little person who comes with it i yeah. want it you know it, so it's remote controlled uh it makes the noises but that's how it. many batteries does it take it takes 18 double a's <laughs> that's crazy not including the d battery that goes in the remote control um <sighs> yeah but uh it you know unless they were making it out of like some some high quality metal material mm -hmm. i can't imagine this thing's made out of metal but no okay so you get one right you go mm -hmm. okay i'm getting one i got it do you sort of uh dent it up a little bit and, and dirty it up a little well you can buy it, it like look... that you, you, you can buy it with battle damage or just a clean droid Oh, wow. Yeah. Which one would you buy? I'm a clean kind of guy. So, really? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, uh, um, Return of the Jedi, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when he when he gets... Uh, or No, no, I'm sorry. The Empire Strikes Back, where he shoots back out of the swamp because that creature spits him out. Mm -hmm. And he's all grungy and dirty. I didn't like that. You know. But, um, yeah. I, I take him nice and polished up, like in... Um, uh, episode one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so this next one is mine. Um, and I've always wanted this. So if anybody's out there with a big pocketbook, you can just, I'll give you my address if you message me. Now, Todd, you won't know anything about this other than it's Zelda. Um, this is. Isn't that character right there, right? That's uh, Mario, right? Yes. No, it's Link. I know. <laughs> This is from the Wind Waker game. They only made around 500 of these things. And it's from uh, First Four Figures, or I'm sorry, uh, Figures, and they do a fantastic job with all the statues they make. But it lights up, man. It lights up. And you won't find just... anything like this uh, as far as Zelda memorabilia ever, or like anywhere else. And you're basically, what you're saying is, you don't have it? I don't have this, no. I don't, I don't collect... Happened? I don't collect the expensive statues. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, when this came out, dude, I, I don't think I was even, like, around to know about it, so... Um, what, what are they... You must have looked. Like, what are they going for right now? Uh, these ones are going for, like, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. They're rare, you know. Um, you're not going to see these anywhere else. Or, you're not going to see these in stores, definitely. Uh, Knowing you, you could probably make this. Yeah, yeah. I could sculpt that, yeah. Yeah. But, um, it's not the same. But, maybe you could sculpt one so good that you could sell it to buy the real one. I'll get a cease and desist. <laughs> they, no, they no, what? you call it a one of a kind. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, uh, this game though that the statue is based off of, I, I I love that game, I, and it's a very, it's got a warm feeling to it, and the statue is just a great tribute to that game, mm -hmm. because it's like it's like uh you, you've ever uh have you ever played Assassin's Creed? Yeah. Have you ever played Assassin's Creed Black Flag? Yeah. Okay, so this was before Black Flag. This was like the first real experience you could get, just sailing around on the seas. Okay, it was really cartoony, a lot of jokes, really lighthearted, um, but it was it was just the the sense of exploration on the seas you couldn't get anywhere else at the time, and it was just it, they hit it right on the head, dude. Mm -hmm. So, you showed me a game the other day. Was it Breath of the Fire or something like that? Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, and and it was the first time since I don't know, let's say the first game, you know. That I will, you know what? Actually, I have had a couple, right? There was one where you start off and you you sort of learn to ride this horse and shoot a bow, and and I can only take so much of that. It was a, a wee one, um, but you showed me that one 
um, Breath of the Wild, and I thought this is something I could I could enjoy. I would get into. Yeah, that's a game able. for everybody. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a, definitely for everybody. Because Sky, Skyrim is not a game that I completely enjoyed, but I went through because I just loved the artistry. Oh yeah, and, and like I wanted to see, like I need to see everything. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of game looked like something like that but uh, skyrim was just a lot of this you know unfortunately a game like that where it's like hack and slash i guess you would call it mm -hmm. um it wears on me after a while but the beauty of walking around and seeing do you get that sense of like, it's kind of a little too grindy where you got to keep grinding yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh no uh zelda doesn't like that you don't level up or anything like that so uh, you get better weapons, but you don't level up. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's it's definitely a game for everybody, and uh, one day you will play it. I'm pretty sure. Go get yourself now, a Nintendo are, Todd. Are there things that attack you because they're meant to attack you? In Zelda? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. So the, if you get near something, it'll automatically key in on you and start attacking. Well, I mean, you can be sneaky, or you can, like, go in and, like, there's a proximity to everything, right? So, mm -hmm. like, if you go running into an enemy's camp, of course they're going to attack you. But you can outrun anything. I pretty much can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those new sneakers are paying off. That's right. Uh, Helium filled. Yeah. Psh, Nike. All right. Uh, let's go on to yours, Todd. Let's see here. I, I picked something that I thought I could buy or afford. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. These aren't the prices that, by the way, these aren't the prices that you would see if you go on Amazon and, and they still have these. Um, well, you can actually uh, pre order the Todd McFarlane one from this site right now. Right. Uh, for 90 bucks. But what? what? The, these almost might. Yeah, these are the same. I wonder why they have individual prices because these are box sets. That are around thirty, or they're around forty bucks. Oh, they're box. Oh, so these are more expensive. Yeah, I wonder why. I well, wonder, a lot of these are disc. Is. Well, here's a box set right here. Right. Right. Yeah, that one's actually got a cool Joker that comes with it. Mm hmm So I think they're adding some some specialty figures if you're a box set collector that they're trying to entice you with some individual figures that aren't in box sets is basically what I think I'm seeing. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the box set figures. Yeah. I like the uh, Catwoman from the animated series that they have. Mm -hmm. That one looks pretty good. But uh, I, I I knew that there was only a few of these until you showed me. And I was like, dang, there's like almost hundreds of these that you can buy. Look, go up. I think that was a Joe um, or Jack Napier one. from. Yes, Sean Gordon Murphy. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, this is a limited edition. Yeah, those those two words right there, like if I see something with Zelda that says limited edition, I freak out. Really? Oh yeah. Like I gotta go get that. I'll, I've I've stayed in tents before, waiting for stuff to come out. You told me this. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. So. That's that is a cool figure right there. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, these are affordable. Um, I don't know that I would buy some of the individual ones, but the box sets you can get on Amazon. Like I said, they're anywhere from thirty-four dollars to forty dollars. Yeah, these aren't bad at all. Um, it'd be cool to collect the whole thing, put um, paper clips on them, and hang them from your Christmas tree. Because <laughs> there's so many of them. Hmm. Um. I've done that. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. This is God's honest truth. What? I have a white Christmas tree with uh, Red Sox lighting, oh. Red Sox balls, uh, everything on it. Red Sox Red candy Sox. canes. Everything what? on it is Red Sox. It's You're the most me. beautiful thing on the planet. <laughs> it's the <laughs> most beautiful thing. Honey, not now. I'm looking at my tree. <laughs> you know, I've only put it up two times. Uh, uh so you do you keep it in the box? I'm not putting that tree up. I'm not putting because it goes. It's basically I have a uh uh, I actually have a, a faux um Fenway Park downstairs. Yeah. Painted green wall everything, so it it it's meant for down there, right? 
um, well, um, my boys are older, they don't live with me anymore, and so my daughter has uh, taken over that room, which it used to be a man cave, we used to be down there all the time, and whenever they would come home, we'd go, the fun police are home, we can clean up. <laughs> <laughs> so now it has become romper room, uh, Toys R Us is basically in, inhabiting my basement, so it's no longer a green and red room full of Red Sox stuff, it's now full of uh, Shopkins and LOL dolls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you do that for the kids, you know. Yeah, obviously. Um, Evan, I this is the same Katrina. stream, just, yeah. It's the, or, no, I'm sorry, no, this is a different stream. This is Toy Tuesday, man. This is Toy Tuesday. We take this seriously. It's very serious. It's very serious. Um... No, I remember when my son was born. I stopped buying video games for almost a decade. And, uh, because I, I would spend my paychecks on video games. And, uh, all Nintendo stuff. But I, I uh, ended up selling everything when he was born. But now, you know, you slowly build that collection back up, you know? Mm -hmm. That way you can show it off and tell your friends, look, I have stuff. Um, Do you know what, though? Here's hmm. something cool. Because some of these guys, um, these black and white statues, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're kind of, well, actually, Jared Way is, a, I think he's, I believe he's a writer. But some of these are stylized after artists. The artists that, that you, you know, this was their Batman. That's Sean Murphy's Batman yeah. that he used in White Knight. Imagine there being a Joe White version of black and white Batman. Oh, I would only I, I would only let you buy one, Todd. This is what I'm thinking. Like we're not good enough. We need to get better, so that we can draw at least a few issues of Batman and get our own black and white Batman. I'm gonna be sixty before they're gonna let me draw Batman. Can you imagine a J. Scott Campbell Batman statue? I'd would buy you get it? it. I would buy. I have a J. Scott Campbell uh, signed. Uh, Gen 13 statue. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sorry, not the statue. That one's the hard one to find. I have the doll in the box. Yeah. See this Mark Silvestri Batman? Yeah. It's for some artwork, right? I believe. I know he did. Is he on a chair? Or is he yeah, just standing like he is that? Sitting. He's sitting in the back cave. Oh, okay. Basically. But, um, he's been working on a book. Hmm. And he's supposed to be, this is it. He's going to retire after this. But he's been working on this Batman opus kind of book. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, uh, it's funny because it was promoed four years ago. What? Yeah. So it's the taken him four years to, to put this thing out? Mm, it must have turned into something bigger and better, I'm guessing. Because it's not like Mark Silvestri is not... not fast granted he's living a like a different kind of lifestyle now mm -hmm. and maybe he doesn't get to draw you know because he's he owns a business so maybe he doesn't get to draw as much and has to you know sometimes uh, obviously uh, some of these guys are always pulled to hollywood for some of their properties and so maybe there's meetings and things but man if you can't get out this book eventually right it was actually right. you know some of the artwork was absolutely stellar I mean, he was doing the best job artistically that you would ever see him done. He was just really put, putting everything in these pages, and then all of a sudden you stop seeing the pages. Oh, so, I don't like when that happens. I don't know what's going. I, I have, I've almost forgot about it until I saw this image, and I wonder what the dealio is. You know, because you think it's ever going to come out? I well. Fuck. <laughs> The last time, the last person I asked about this was uh, Matt Hawkins, and he said, "Yeah, this is you know, he's doing this and then retiring. Uh, you know, he'll, meaning that he won't illustrate uh, interiors in a book anymore. So I think it is going to come out, hmm. but he'll I guess he'll do covers and things like that afterwards. But this is going to be the last interior artwork that you see from, from Mark Sylvester. That's sad." It's always, well, I mean, it's always sad to see one, one go, you know? It's funny because, you know, not many people realize, I think he started when he was 18, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that was in the early, early 80s. Um, some of his first work, 
like on Conan and stuff like that. I don't know if people remember before the Jim Lee run, but after the um, John Byrne run was Mark Silvestri. That was the hot artist on X-Men for so many years. So many of the issues were drawn by Mark Silvestri. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really know your artists. I yeah, that's pretty cool. This is a Jim Lee one right here. I'm sorry, that's Bob Kane. I clicked on the wrong one. Here's the Jim Lee. Jim Lee's drawing, or at least a statue from his drawing, looks like mm -hmm. a standard action figure. pretty cool well let's uh let's go on to the last one we got here um do you like transformers Todd? i do and granted i've seen all the movies including last night but it's just the idea of not granted good bad doesn't matter that, that's not the, I, I, we don't i don't sit here to do that i right. watched them because seeing these things on screen to me is amazing each time the only movie i haven't seen is bumblebee Oh yeah, um, yeah. So, to, just the fact that they're you're seeing a transformer on the movie screen, and they're making it look real, to me that's incredible. Because these things were toys they played with, and they were uh, a cartoon show. I I don't like the movies honestly. I was a big There's... fan of uh, Transformers Beast Wars in the late '90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, I had literally every single. Uh, toy from that show um, and uh, got rid of them when I was 17 I think uh, which I should have never done but um, anyways I found the biggest transformer toy that you can get Ooh, let's see it it's uh let's see here it's Unicron hmm. and you're going to tell me nobody's made a metal, actual metal looking toy? I'm surprised. Of what? Of, of Unicron? Or any of the Transformers. Like a, a, like a really good looking, out of metal Optimus Prime or something. This mm, looks so cool. No, they do the die cast molds, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they. Look at that, dude. Look how big this guy is. He is pretty big. Yeah. Would you, you buy? Tell me there's not a life-size version of Optimus Prime out there, though. Um, there is. I think some guy made one in an alleyway, out of scrap metal. You want me to look for it? <laughs> this is well. This is a hokey-looking. Like, why is he got all those weird? It's like he's got cheese hanging off of him. No, it's Unicron, man. Come on, respect, respect it. I don't know, maybe I'm not familiar with the Unicron. He's the planet. He, he's the planet? Well, he's not the planet that they come from, no. He, he's not uh, Cybertron. But, right. he, you know, he's um, he's a planet. Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting all this. What does this say or Orson Welles in the title? Uh, as big as Orson Welles. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty effed up. <laughs> It was Orson Welles a big guy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm going to pull a picture of Orson Welles now. <laughs> Give it's me one like, it's, it's like saying as big as Louis... What was his, what's his name? Louis CK? No, no. Uh, you mean uh, Louis, the guy who used to do Family Feud. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. oh, I used to know his name. I don't anymore. I know. Louis Anderson, I think it is. It's just like... you. You couldn't say as big as a truck or as big as a... <laughs> you had to pick a person who's fat yes. and disparage them. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> okay, I know who this guy is. <laughs> That's funny, dude. <laughs> Made some really good movies, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And he used to appear every Thanksgiving. I'm not sure why, I just remember them in the back of my head. Um, always had some kind of Thanksgiving message. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, I'll have to look into it. Was he always like, you know, like, 
just a sign off? Like, have a good no, holiday? No, it's kind of like a, you know, certain people always had sort of a holiday show. Like, Dean Martin would have like a Christmas special. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy's shtick was Thanksgiving morning just before the parade. So I don't know if he was like lead, a lead into the parade or something. Okay. But I believe he used to have something to do with the March of Dimes. March of Dimes. Yeah. yeah. This is all old. I'm getting. I'm aging myself here. Yeah, you are. You're. You're kind of in the in the woods now. You know, I just can't follow you. Right. Um, March I, of Dimes. I know. I know him only because of Macbeth. <laughs> you never saw a touch of evil. No. Wow, well, that's a movie. That's a. Uh, if you ever take cinema, that's one of those cinema movies that, that the teacher makes you watch. Touch of Evil. So, can we figure out how much this guy weighed? Please, let's not. He was a big guy at the end. Died back in '85. Hmm. What's the one famous movie with the rosebud sled? With the what? The rosebud sled. It was all about a sled. This is a very famous movie. Like one of the, you know, one of those, uh... 350 pounds towards the end of his life. Wow. Yeah. That's a very nice a Hasbro to come up with that. <laughs> so this thing should weigh close to 350 pounds. <laughs> That's not nice. Who's the writer of this article? Uh, Jordan Minor. Crap, Jordan, what were you thinking? You're fat shaming. Jordan. <sighs> never mind, I'm not gonna read his bio. Let's leave Jordan alone. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll leave him alone. Yeah. You never know. Maybe yeah. he was just thought it was yeah. funny. It's um, not that it's not funny. I mean, it's just not respectable. I just, I, I like how he uses it as a measurement, though. <laughs> He thinking in his own <laughs> life he walks around. <laughs> Can you imagine somehow in your life you become a measurement? As tall as my new bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. It's not that Orson Welles was a good actor, it's just he was huge. It's huge. Oh man. But that's all the that's all the toys I got for us tonight. No, -uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We we had the uh, golem, the, the pizza chairs, the twenty five thousand dollar R two D two. There's. Um, well, hold on. Let's no, do a no. little research. Let's do one more, right? Because there's a new game coming out. There's a new Link game coming out. No, it already came out. So, oh, it already came out. Mm-hmm. And there's no toys attached to it. Uh, no, there's a few. There's like a, an amiibo, you can get some pins. Nintendo doesn't really do like, here's all this merch. Those are all third party people. And the thing about Zelda is that a lot of people who love Zelda don't really buy third party merch. Well, show me some of them. What do you mean by amiibo? Like the, the he's dressed in a real outfit you can take no, off? No, no, an amiibo. Like I have all the amiibos except for that one. I need to go pick that one up. Um. It's the Amiibo is a little figurine that you can put on your controller and it will give you in-game stuff because it's got a RFID chip in it. Come on. Hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to get this thing? Of course I am. Like, I got them all. Um... Okay, so here's the Amiibo. It's kind of Chibli style, huh? Uh, well, it, it's well, where'd he go? Um, it's really the only style you could do with that game that they just remade. Because uh, it was an over-the-head game, like the original Zelda was, or the Super Nintendo was. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't really make him look like the adult Link that you see in the newer series. But it's it's just. It's, it's, it's like that Wind Waker game. It's just a nice, casual, like, adventure game. Right? So, so, Link fans aren't as staunch. 
or Zelda fans aren't as staunch. Like, how can you make a lesser game? No. After making such a good game like Breath of Fire. Link's Awakening was the first Zelda game on the original Game Boy. And it was, I wouldn't say groundbreaking, right? Um, but it was definitely a testament to, to what they were trying to do at the time. Because um, you just, right after um, A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo came out, they came out with this one, and it was just like perfect, perfect timing. It, it fell in line with the other game pretty well as far as like the mechanics of it, and so you could just jump on this game and start playing it. And the story is kind of, this is one of those games where you don't save Zelda. You know? So it is, it's got like this side adventure, it's a side story, but it's a really good one. It, you know, it's funny because if you look at Zelda games, all the side story games that have nothing to do with Zelda are the, some of the best ones. Hmm. So this one, you save a uh, a whale. Oh, you told me about this. Mm -hmm. now, the whole thing. Save a, a whale. Mm -hmm. You're inside of its dream. The, the entire island, all the people, um, everything you do is inside the whale's dream. And then you wake up, uh, floating on a broken raft in the ocean. Do you think they have better drugs over there in Japan than we do? No, I think they have a a better imagination. Like, no, 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 a better heritage of mythos, right? Like we have Greek mythology, Western civilization does, and that's mm -hmm. our mythos, right? I think theirs was a thousand times more creative than ours were was, because ours was so logical that it just like certain things just can't fit in there, right? But theirs is just like, you want this popsicle to start talking and then impregnate somebody? It can do that, you know? Right. <laughs> and that's what they do. <laughs> and, and that's why I would watch, like, of course, I watched all those studio, you know, Ghibli movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I watched it for the artistry and I've watched some that I've gotten into. But there, I've certainly watched some. And I didn't get into the movie, but of course I watched it. But I couldn't tell you what went on and all that right it's just a little hard to follow um especially when i don't think the translation is always perfect on some of those movies right um, eric eric hawkins has been in the chat i just noticed that yeah yeah um hey eric how you doing look go ahead todd so uh why haven't you know you are like super fan right i'd consider you super fan link super fan no, no, Zelda. Like, the game, Zelda, the yeah, franchise, yeah, yeah. not Sorry. just Link, yeah. Right, right. But you get what I mean. You're, you're a super fan. So, why haven't you put together a show? Or even, for instance, like, remember Carl's video, which is an excellent video on our channel uh, about Luigi's Mansion? Why haven't you done something like that uh, with Zelda yet? Because you are a super fan. Because I don't want to take the fun out of it. I don't want to make it a job. It's not. Why would you say that? Well, I, I mean, that, I think that that's an excellent video. It's very entertaining. If everything uh, I enjoy has to be used to to either like gain a fan base in the long run to gain money, I don't want anything to do with it. Because I, I mean, my art's already there, right? So right. I don't want to take the, one of the last things I really appreciate that hasn't been t like tainted as far as like. Um, like a cultural uprising that we see all over the world right now with all these different politics that are being injected everywhere. This is the last thing that I can like enjoy that doesn't have that in there. And I don't want to put it out there like that, you know? Okay. Um, so let me ask you a hypothetical question, right? Mm -hmm. The book you're working on mm -hmm. becomes a huge hit. Say just, you know, hypothetical work with me here becomes a huge hit. Nintendo comes to you and goes, Hey, your book link. We want a crossover. Now you win. I, I would if I could write it. Yeah. 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 I, I'd rather write a Zelda book than draw one. Absolutely. Oh, so you wouldn't draw it? Mm -mm. No, I would find someone who's way better than I than I was. You're too intimidated, aren't you? No, 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 no. It's not the intimidation. It's just it it, it deserves respect. Why do you Why do you downplay your art? You You have amazing talent. It's very. Uh. You have some academia behind you. You have uh... because there's a level that I would like to be at that I'm not quite there yet. You know, 
Like I've got yeah. a I've got a goal that I would like to reach within this next like two years with as far as my skill level is. And uh, like okay, like if they came to me now, I'd be like, look, there's definitely someone out there who could do a little bit better than me. But like two years from now, ask me again. Okay. Yeah. Um. But if if, if the socks came to you and was like, hey, Todd. We we heard that your fantasy baseball team won. Do you want to come coach this season? Oh, you know what? Here's the thing, though. <laughs> Here here's the truth about this. Yeah. Um, I've only been playing fantasy baseball for uh, about eight eight seasons. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, and not not many. Hopefully, nobody's listening. But I used to control two teams in the same fantasy league. Mm -hmm. But under the auspices is my son had one and I had one. But sometimes he would start off and, and by the first month he'd be done. So I'd have to take over his team and control it and stuff. So uh, I've won a total of, I have six first place finishes. Ooh. Five second place finishes and five third place finishes in eight years with a total of those two teams. Really? One of them he did. One of those is his, though. One of those first place finishes. So I really have five, five and five. Five first, five second, five thirds. I could coach baseball in a heartbeat. <laughs> There's nothing I don't know about baseball. Uh, that's awesome, dude. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know I've got a lot of guys who do um, fantasy football, right? Uh, I never got into football, but everyone in Colorado likes the Broncos. Well, well here's the thing about here, here's the thing about any fantasy sports, mm -hmm. right? It's about the stats. Don't fall in love with the names. Don't go, oh, I got to draft my favorite player. And, it, you know, no matter if he sucks or doesn't, you're afraid to drop him. No, I'm not attached to anybody. I'm attached to the stats. There's 100 moves that we can make in a season. And every year I make very close to 100 moves. Hmm. Because I don't, I don't attach to the name. I attach to the stats. And I can read those stats like you would not believe. So if, you're, if your player starts uh, dipping a little bit, you kick him out and get someone new? You trade them? I've made, I've made a few mistakes yeah. here and there. Over every year, I have like one big one. This year, I didn't make any, but last year I had a big one. It was a pitcher that turned it around that I that had I, I had my eye on. It was a new pitcher, mm -hmm. but had ended up with a great uh, season. But yeah, every year I make about one mistake. Mm. One year I dropped Poppy, and he turned it around. Okay. I'm sure you don't know. But you know I don't. Ortiz. I have no idea. I have no idea. David Ortiz. It was okay. a clutch hitter for the Boston Red Sox, and I actually dropped him. Because he, not, I'm sure people remember, he would come out of the gate and have this really awful start and then turn it around. But, you know, that year, that particular first year that he did that, mm -hmm. he didn't turn it around. But the second year that he started bad, he did. So do he you, turned it around in a big way. Do you do the squares thing? Do you, like, do bets? Do uh, you gamble? Uh, I have. Mm -hmm. I've done this for money before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a very good record. There's a, there, like, as far as uh, my understanding goes, there's there's websites out there that actually promote that stuff now. Like, you can go by. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. legal to do that. I, I, it mm -hmm. just blew my mind. I was like, you can even do this? Because um, I thought betting on sports like that publicly was illegal. Yeah, I've done oh. it uh, under the, you know, under the top of the table and, and, and on top of the table mm. both ways. Yeah. The only there's you know obviously I'm my football team is hit or miss because I don't know any of these people so I never even know who the players are I know you know I know some of the players obviously but I never even draft my team I just let it auto draft and oh, so wow. I end up yeah I I ended up with uh, players oh for instance this year I won baseball right mm -hmm. I auto drafted my team I didn't even put in the players I wanted I ended up with players I would never pick I would never pick Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is not not a consistent player. He he ends up with good stats at the end of the year, but he's not you know he's so streaky. I'm not big on streaky players. I like consistent players. Mm -hmm. And so the very first pick that my my team picked, you know, the auto draft pick for me was Bryce Harper. But I wouldn't I wouldn't even pick him in the fifteenth round to be honest. Jeez. That's how much I don't like him. Sounds like he's a bad player. No, no, he's not a bad player. But he's he's not a good player for me. <laughs> okay, gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, he just doesn't meet my my 
type of player. You know? Well, we're, we're hitting that mark, Todd. So go. Can you can you plug us real quick? Sure. Um, you know, again, we this is our second show. We did a show earlier today. Tell about tomorrow's show. Oh, tomorrow's show is New Comics Wednesday. Okay. So it's basically what what comes out, and we're gonna highlight a few books. Um, I, I like this kind of show, and granted, it's it's on a, on the Wednesday that books come out, and that's kind of tricky. But because um, I always like to show people books that they're not aware of, which is really big with me, like mm-hmm. uh, you know European books and stuff like that that people don't know. Now, granted, granted, I'm I'm, I'm a geek, baseball geek, but I'm also a comic geek, and, and you like you say, I know all the artists, so um, I'm sure I'll have a few books uh, to try to uh, entice people with as far as they may not, you know, give it a second look um, because you're like, well, look at the cover, look at the title, look who's who, who the creators are. No, I'll try to hook you onto some books that are pretty good, and and that's my aim for for tomorrow's show. Um, we had a show earlier today that I did with an interview because remember yesterday's show was huge, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think we may end up uh, doing that more often because it was actually a good show, mm-hmm. but we don't want to run out of uh, books to show. But someone contacted me after, remember we made a post? You made a post. Your post was on Twitter. Right. My post was on Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. So I have all kinds of books. People <laughs> poked me and said, hey, can you look at our book? Can you look right. at our book? Can you look at So I saw one today that only had a couple of days left, right? When I went and looked at it, when she, like, but right before I went to bed, it had four days left. So I, I was like, dang. Uh, I'll make a show around you, okay? So I contact her. She doesn't get back to me until seven fifteen, <laughs> uh, because you know she's in Australia, and I'm not even knowing that. I didn't even realize that. So she's in Australia. She's asleep. I'm going. Hey, Kay, you know, uh, hey, Lauren, can can we do this show? Blah blah blah. We'd like to have you on. Uh, I want to get eyes on your book before it, uh, you know, before it ends. Mm-hmm. So uh, seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. She contacts me, and uh, I figure, you know what? I'm just gonna make a show around her. You, you, you know, she had a couple hours before she had to go. Uh, yeah, that was class. quick planning, dude. Was, right. Yeah. And, and I wanted to get eyes on the book because the book looked good. Mm-hmm. And when I saw that only had three days left, I knew we weren't going to get around to it because we're going to do this show on Monday. Now, that was really, you know what? That was a really good show. Um, I'm hoping to get some of those people that were involved with some of those books that we looked at on our show. So that that could be coming up on, a, on, on Sunday. We'll see. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so it, 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 basically, if you haven't, if you didn't know that I was on earlier with her, uh, check out Lauren Marshall's uh, episode that we did earlier, whatever you want to call it, and show, and uh, uh, hear her talk about the book and see if you'd like to get involved in uh, the campaign and backing her. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the links down below here in a minute for that. Hmm. But uh, go ahead and plug us, and we'll, we'll head out. All right. Uh, thanks for coming to, to watch IndieCom TV. We're going to do a daily show, and every day it's going to have a different theme. Uh, like I mentioned, tomorrow's show, and, and, and Thursday's a throwback Thursday. And uh, Friday, we're going to keep quiet for a little bit and then surprise you with it. Um, but I hope you'll, you know, we're hoping this is a good time slot. We have people that are associated with IndieCom TV that we don't want to uh, to go on there. Sh- like, we, we don't want to be on where they're on because they're good to us and we want to be good to them. So we picked the 10 o'clock time, uh, time slot. That works for a couple of us. It doesn't work for everybody because we'd love to have John Diller be a part of this, but we have some other people. We'd love to have them join us. Uh, so hopefully they see that we want to do this uh, weekdays every day at this time. And we can kind of grow this and help this because I think last night's show got us, what, uh, uh, eight subscribers? That was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, it was a great show last night. It was really good. Mm. Mm. So yeah, um, so make sure you, if you just type in Indiecom TV in any platform, we're on all platforms. So Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, just go ahead and uh, follow us on, anywhere. Um, like and share the, the show, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow at uh, eight o'clock uh, Mountain Standard Time. And ten uh, o'clock Eastern. Ten o'clock Eastern. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll catch you guys later. Thank you for coming. Later.